This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness. And in this game review, we are taking a look at a game called Hive Jump. The Steam store page states, Hive Jump is a sci-fi action platformer for one to four players blending run and gun gameplay with roguelike elements. To me, this game is very reminiscent of classic arcade games. Now that you have a small idea of what the game is, let's jump into the details so you can make an informed decision on if this game is worth a buy or not. Hive Jump has four ways you can play. Your first option is Find Match. This searches for an open game lobby so you can play multiplayer. And while this does not really change the style of gameplay, I'm still counting it as an option. Next there is Campaign. This is in my opinion the most interesting way to play. That is because there are actually two forms of gameplay here. There is the turn-based conquer the map style game where you have to take control of nodes and keep your nodes from being taken. Then there is the actual arcade style run and gun roguelike game which is how you take nodes. Then we have the arcade style, which is essentially see how far you can get in the game before you die. You can also play this mode with friends on the net or over LAN. This leads us into the challenges gameplay option, in which the game will put your skills to the test in daily, weekly, speedrun, hardcore, and endless challenges. These challenge scores are posted to an online leaderboard so you can see how your skills compare to other hive jumpers out there. Now let's talk about actual gameplay. The first thing you will notice once you start up a game is that you have a bit of character customization. You can select your color, your insignia, and skin. You can also customize your style of gameplay by choosing your weapon type, grenade type, and your utility power. Each of the weapon types, aka rifle mods, has three upgrades that can be purchased to increase anything from damage to cooling capabilities. There is a pretty wide array of customization here for the limited options they have available. The really cool thing is that because of the way the game is designed, they could easily add new options at any time. Take note though that pretty much all of these options for customized gameplay need to be unlocked. The really neat part about this is that you can unlock the options you want when you want them, because in order to unlock them, you simply need to buy them. How do you get money to buy them, you ask? Well, you kill things, of course. So as you play and complete levels, you will earn goo, which is the currency in this game. And you can use it to unlock rifle mods, grenades, utilities, and upgrades. One of the things I enjoy most about this game, aside from the ability to customize your character easily, is that when you die, you don't really die. Your character carries a backpack. This pack is your lifeline. If you die, you can move the pack around the screen in order to keep it out of harm's way. And after a small period of time, which at times feels like years, you respawn at the pack's location. The pack has a health bar of its own when it's not attached to you. So as long as you keep the pack alive, you can keep respawning and never really die. You can even throw the pack from your back at any time and it can be knocked off of you. It's a really interesting concept that I enjoy. There are also challenge rooms on every level and if you complete them, you can earn perks that do everything from give you knockback resistance to decreasing how fast your weapon heats up. Note that these perks only last until you complete the level. Now for some random info. Your guns do not have ammo, they have heat. As you fire, your gun builds up heat. And if that heat maxes out, you will be left unable to fire for a few seconds. Different weapons have different heat buildup. For example, the poison cloud can fire much longer than the flamethrower. You can fly with jump jets. You are equipped with jump jets that give you temporary flight. You can also unlock a utility that will allow you to hover for a period of time. You will not get to keep the goo you collect until you complete the level that you are in. Before I give this game a rating and wrap up, let's talk about pros and cons. Pros. Number one, character customization. Number two, different ways to play. Number three, the way the campaign mode mixes different elements of gameplay is fantastic. Number four, gameplay is fast paced and well balanced. Number five, the backpack life mechanic makes for interesting gameplay. Now for the cons. Number one, 
You can't rebind keys. This is probably because the game is meant to be played with a controller. However, you should still be able to do this. Number 2. Enemies and bosses lack variety. This is something that can be easily fixed in future patches though. Number 3. I could not find any multiplayer lobbies to join, so I was unable to test the multiplayer aspect of the game. Number 4. The price tag. The game comes with a $19.99 price tag in the Steam store, so basically 20 bucks. When you have other games being released that are in line with AAA titles for only $30, this price tag seems rather high to me. But ultimately, its worth is for you to decide. So taking everything into consideration, I have to give this game a solid 3 out of 5. While I do not agree with the price tag, I can't deny that it is a solid and enjoyable game. If you want to know more about my rating system, please check out the information you should know post on my subreddit. It should be at the top, it's sticky, it says information you should know. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy and you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.